Okay, where's hey? Here we go. Hey guys, uh, people in Rocket Land. Um, I think I should have the student rocket behind me. Student number one rocket. Um, and shoot again. Oh, that's that's lined up. That's perfect. Okay, never mind. Here we go. Um, one, two, three lights. My goodness. Well, Paxton and Valencia are joining us, I'm learning things as we uh, go along here. Um, you remember this guy? Let's see, let's remove the motor again to say if, uh, yeah, look at that, it's still a motor. Shim that up. We, we talked about this a lot. We need to, uh, we need to find, um, I think I already have one. We need to find uh, coupling material for this and I'll show you how to shave it down. And uh, Paxton here. Oh, you can't see him on camera. Yeah, I'm putting him here. Paxton's becoming a good kitty. We're getting really close. Um, but uh, I don't know. The cats, they kind of eat on and off. Um, I'm starting to figure things out about uh, uh, animal hierarchy. They won't eat from the bowl that Nora's eating from. Nora's an alpha female. Uh, these two are betas. So they won't eat from a bowl that she eats from, which is why they're not eating the food I give them unless they clean the bowl. Does that make sense? You know, put something in the comments as well. Hit the like, hit the subscribe button, and please leave a comment. Um, <laughs> what are you doing? He's fighting this thing because he didn't like it hanging over him. He thinks I'm teasing him with it. Um, let's uh, kind of put that there for a second. I was about ready to bust out the drill. Um, anyway, I got to keep my mouth shut for now about who I do business with because I'm not, they're not, they're not paying sponsors. Evidently that is a copyright infringement. Uh, I am copyright restriction. I am on copyright restriction with one of my videos. So I gotta just uh, keep things down to account. Uh, when I talk about somebody, I can't recommend them. It's like unpaid advertising, I suppose. It's like forcing them to pay me uh, you know, uh, give me a paycheck for a job that they didn't voluntarily hire me for. So I, I can't do that. I, I think that's what it means. Um, but anyway, I'm in the process of monetizing my channel. Um, I'm also in the process of, and I just, I get to whip myself in the tail for this. Right now I've got three things going. I've got these YouTube videos along with all the rockets we're building together. The third thing I have going, Eric, listen, my goodness. The first thing we have going is this YouTube video of building these rocks and showing you how to do that. The second thing I have going is uh, monetizing uh, YouTube channel, figuring that out. So those two kind of work hand in hand. This, um, so that's like one and one A, excuse me. Number two is, is I'm trying to set my own website up so I don't have to depend on other these, these other uh, sales sites like uh, Shopify or um, OfferUp or eBay eBay, I just, I, I will never do business with again, and I don't care what they say, but, you know, um, but it just, it's just like everybody has their hand in their pie, in, in my pie, and uh, I, I don't see much of anything. I, I'm still waiting for payment on an item I sold on offer up, and I don't know what their excuse is, because even though, <laughs> excuse me, even though there was a mix-up in my accounts and the phone numbers, you have the same banking information for the one account that I'm owed money on. So why hasn't it been deposited in my account? And why haven't I heard from you people about where my money is? So it's a small amount, but you know, somebody somewhere is holding on to it. You know, I, I sent off an item and you gotta wait for buyer to verify and enter verify and then then offer up holds your money in escrow. Um, it, it's just not really cool. It's like I'm not trusted as a seller. Whereas before, about maybe 20 years ago, when I was turning and burning doing business on eBay before, I would um, I would sell the item. I, I would get, uh, I, I'd send the items off. I, I would cover shipping initially, but then I'd get and then I'd get paid for right after. Actually, no, what I think would happen is I got paid for the item. And then once I got paid for the item, deposited the check in my bank and the check cleared, then I had the money to pay for shipping and I kept what was left over as profit. So I got paid for shipping any item before I shipped it out, like an online retailer. Well, you know, um, things started getting really backwards and expensive with eBay 
and I just I just don't like doing with this with them anymore. I sold the car on eBay where the guy backed out because he didn't know how far away he had to drive to get the car. And guess what? Uh, eBay didn't refund me the full amount of money that I'd received from him as payment. Um, they said, well, we, we can't refund the listing fees, uh, something or something like that crap, which they take out of the sale of the vehicle. And so I ended up getting stuck with the, with the listing fees on a thousand dollar vehicle. And the guy fortunately was nice enough to say, I'll just absorb the cost. So I ended up, he ended up only getting refunded like about $920 and eBay kept the rest out of the thousand dollars. I don't dig that. So I don't care what happens, but you know, and then other things I tried to do business with eBay again, I said, well, you know what, now you got to ship the item and, and, the, and the buyer has to verify they received the item. We'll hold your money in escrow and then we'll pay you for the item for shipping. And I got, I, and I just shook my head. I know I've repeated this story before. I shook my head. No, I don't, I don't have the money to ship the item. First of all, I need to get paid for it first. So I just walked away from eBay. I uh, tried a couple of times under a pseudo name. They caught up with me and said, seller account's been shut down. The offer up is just as bad. They want everything to go through their site. Never mind the fact that the guy who wants to buy a gas generator from me lives down the street. So, and how in the hell, if offer up, I said this before too, if offer up, they don't offer shipping on certain items. Well, then what am I supposed to do to get paid? Well, the guy shows up after he's paid for it through offer up. Why the hell is somebody going to do that? They're just going to show up and pay me in person. And offer up didn't like that. They had a tissy fit. And so they shut my account down. So, you know, um, this whole thing with um, selling my products on somebody else's site um, and them taking a 10 to 20 or 30 or 40% profit just because they host the site that's an online auction and sales site, I'm not digging it. So they, they, they don't think these things through. They're just thinking about making money. They're not thinking about the seller experience. So I'm done. So the second thing I'm working on is that website. The third thing I'm working on that I haven't been able to get around to is the, uh, the that U.S. government grant I'm working on for aviation research and development. So I got these three things. So I got this channel to develop. I've got my website to develop. And then I've got to pitch the U.S. government for that aviation research grant. So my hands are full. Um, I'm just drinking water tonight to wet my whistle. So technically speaking, my days are very full. Now that I've talked about this, I got things in clear focus. One, two, three, every single one of my days except for Sunday when I, the Sunday I just spend all day uh, building rockets and maybe going to the movies and I give my friends a uh, call or playing around with the kitties because I love them so much. But Monday through Saturday, it's, um, it's these YouTube videos and prepping the channel in the morning um, and, and building rockets and then, you know, maybe running personal errands. Then it's, it's getting on, um, uh, then it's, it's, it's getting on uh, developing a website which I'm doing by myself. I hope I do a good job and hopefully I can afford that. And then in the late evenings, I'm working on grant work uh, and explaining in detail the technologies that I'm proposing that I get funding for. So I have very full days. Um, I don't really have the time to be making other people rich and playing by their rules and then just hanging myself out to dry, hopefully waiting for the money. Like I said, offer up owes me money on a, on a, on a product that I shipped and delivered in good faith. And they haven't paid me yet. So, and they don't have a customer service number. They do have a customer service number. And it puts you through a 10, 15, or 20 minute uh, outgoing computerized message. At the very end, it says, sorry, it's past business hours. Number one excuse. Number two, sorry, you must refer to our website. I've even applied to Amazon and I've, I've lost faith in Amazon too. Hey Jeff, I think you're a great guy, but um, you make things so impossible. You or your employees make things so impossible to be part of your organization. I, I just have lost interest. So I have plenty of great ideas that help make your organization great uh, with, with, with regards to deep you know, to blue origin. But you know, if you're going to, if you're going to choke the talent before it has a chance to even, you know, get through the front door of the airport, it's not going to take off the runway. I, I don't know what to tell you, Jeff, you, you either need to make uh, yourself and your, and your, your company more accessible or you're, or you're going to let the talent go too. That's a problem with the United States. The United States can't harness or find or harness and implement talented people because they, everything's run like a political organization, like the U.S. government. 
Uh, people have to have rules and hangups. People are backstabbing, they're lying, they're cheating. Uh, organizations are so large and disorganized, left hand doesn't know what the right hand is doing, so nothing gets off the ground. So, um, so I'm done. So I'm going to make my own website, uh, generate some income from the YouTube channel. Hopefully this doesn't go sideways either um, because the large human organizations, that the larger they get, the more disorganized and fragmented and, and uh, they become. And it just kind of seems like yeah, everybody is in it, yeah, everybody's in it for themselves. They're not contributing to the greater good of the company and they're definitely not focused on customer service or good product. I hope that doesn't happen to YouTube, but if it does, I'll figure something else out. By that time, I also have a second, uh, uh, I have another stream, income stream hopefully coming in on, on May the 10th, which is you know now less than four days away. Uh, thankfully, I've got my car fixed so I can make it to that. So I just don't want to have to worry about money at all. If I'm not worried about money or self-preservation, I'm not worried about a thing including death, <clears throat> I can focus on rocket building and teaching and the channel and the website and the U.S. government grant. If I have to, I'll buy my own TV station and I'll air our programs on public television. I don't know. Um, you just, you have to keep, keep at things. Um, the more opportunities, the more these companies come up to give opportunities to people to, to actually speak their mind, you know, of by and for the people, the more these larger corporations work through the government to shut these, these, the voice, individual voices down. It's bad for large business. So they're trying to shut TikTok down. And I got to tell you, I don't, I, I, from what I understand, TikTok is not based in the United States. Uh, so, and the United States said they're going to shut down TikTok. Well, I mean, you, you're telling me they're going to censor the internet. The internet, the internet is the last bastion of non-censored free-form entertainment. It's very, very entertaining. YouTube is incredible. It is the most. Uh, it, you can you can get some of the most incredible, um, informative material and entertaining shows because it cuts out these large companies that sucks so much of the life out of the process of creative media. So I just, I'm just done with that free YouTube is free form. It is a last bastion of somewhat uh, freedom, some freedom of expression through the visual arts, informative programs, uh, nature documentaries, um, mockumentaries, comedy, uh, the best and in, in the better part in the, in the some of the best parts of YouTube were also the, the best part of, uh, of uh, the best television shows on the best times to watch TV. So YouTube has all the best of the best of the best. And I just I hope that I just hope that some large corporation doesn't try and use the government, the US government to shut down YouTube or restrict it or say, well, you need to put down a $15,000 uh, FCC uh, censorship regulatory fee and then just go ahead and weed out all the little people who can't who can't foot the bill and then guess what YouTube is all commercial TV and it ends up being just as crappy as cable TV and network television which is just beyond awful right now nobody watches network TV because it stinks so um, but anyway I've gone off enough this isn't psychology today but I wanted to show you a project we're gonna you know, I promise we're going to get back to the student rocket, student number one, <laughs> number one student rocket tomorrow. Um, we're going to be cutting some fins from this material right here, which is not the only piece I have, but it's the only piece that I have that's conditioned from those two black plates I told you about. I got them for 50 cents each from Target. Uh, I'm not, I'm not recommending or non, non recommending Target. I'm not promoting anybody unless I've been hired. Uh, to 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 um, to hire to sponsor them, so I'm not doing that anymore, and I don't want to get in trouble. Business is business, fair is fair, and I understand that. So I thought that's not what I'm complaining against. This material is is unfinished. This material is finished. I need to show you how to do that. Uh, it's a several step process. I don't know if you can see the detail in this material, but it's been planed down and resurfaced. Well, on two different axes and, and a spiral pattern by the uh, block sander that's in the uh, gray DeWalt cabinet behind me. And this, um, and I've learned something about making fins out of this fin material. 
before guys, before, not after, before you start cutting up this material into uh, fin shapes, because it's so difficult, once you cut the fins to the right size, it's so difficult to get the right surface quality on fins after they've been cut. Now what I'm doing is I'm changing, I'm changing the, I'm, I'm the process engineering, or I'm retooling the process engineering, rethinking my process engineering. You're taking the entire section of material that you're gonna make fins out of, and you're gonna condition the surfaces then. Then after that, then you're gonna pattern make fins and make them match up relatively even to each other. And then from, so from there, you, you then have, um, cats are pushing two of us on the bed, and I'm pushing back. Um, and then from there, then you cut the fins. And then you use that multi-purpose tool, which I swear I'm gonna etch my name into so I cannot return it. You keep it, you hold onto it, and you cut the little round blade uh, for cutting. Um, and then you, then you rub the material. Um, but I wanted to explain something to you about that blade too. But I'm getting into what we're going to be doing tomorrow. So tomorrow we're going to be conditioning this piece of material. This piece of material is already conditioned and we're going to put fins on this rocket. I'll make this rocket exciting. We're, I'm going to show you how to set up, uh, three large fins at 120 degrees and then three smaller fins to fit in between those larger fins. And I'll show you how neat that looks. I don't know if I invented the look. It doesn't really matter, but, but it, it's kind of, um, it's just kind of an unusual appearance. Plus six fins is better than five, which is better than four. More guidance and stability. Um, and as mentioned before, oh, excuse me, I'm so sorry. Um, I do that every time. And as mentioned before, um, what we're gonna do uh, is we, um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna concentrate and making determinations. You've, through the use of a dry erase board and math, I'm sorry, we're gonna figure out three critical, uh, three critical calculations or three three critical um, uh, points of interest that involve math for any rocket uh, that launches rockets launch vertically, missiles launch sideways. I don't even like to say the word uh, missile. We don't do anything military here. I respect the military. I've said this before. But we don't do we don't make weapons that kill people. We don't engage in terrorist activities. We don't do that. If I find out that's happening, then guess what? I I, I will channel. I will shut this channel down. I will never speak about rockets again. And um, I have I still have three other things to work on in my life uh, with regards to aerospace and not just rockets, but also aircraft and propulsion systems. I don't necessarily desperately need this channel to work if it's causing people to do things that are harmful, dangerous, or destructive. I don't teach terrorists. If I find out I am doing this, doing that, I'm gonna, I'm gonna contact YouTube, have every single one of my episodes erased off of YouTube for fear of educating terrorists on how to make missiles. And I'm gonna shut the channel down and you will never see my face again. You can figure out rockets on your own if you wanna harm, hurt, or kill people or destroy property and uh, engage in acts of uh, uh, of uh, terrorism and civil unrest. I don't support that. I'm a Christian. I'm one of Jehovah's Witnesses. I don't do that sort of nonsense. This is for recreation. It's also for educational purposes. Now, three critical calculations we need to make for every rocket. Number one, coefficient of drag. Number two, power to weight ratio, uh, which is the weight of the rocket with, with uh, full payload, parachute, uh, recovery wadding, uh, full motor, which, which includes a motor, the motor, propellant, nozzle, uh, head end, bulkhead, a separation grain, delay grain, et cetera, et cetera. And also the paint too. And we're going to do some fun stuff. So we're going to put the six fins on this tomorrow, but okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> the, uh, the third, actually the third critical, uh, calculation to make is, is a two parter. Three A is center of pressure. 3B is center of gravity. We're going to teach you how to, how to um, calculate that as well. Center of pressure is very, very, very detailed. It's very difficult. It's very meticulous, but it's extremely important. Calculating the center, center of pressure of your rocket is almost everything. I mean, it's one thing to have an underpowered rocket, but if it shoots off the pad straight and only goes 500 feet in the air and then a parachute pops out and recovers, we have a 500 foot altitude flight, it went fine. Can you calculate your center of pressure? 
but you are off in your power to rate ratio calculations. The total specific impulse, if the burn time was, was fine, the total, uh, total uh, uh, pressure of thrust, you, you put a motor in the rocket that was too small. That's no big deal. Center of uh, uh, drag of uh, coefficient of drag is no big deal. Sometimes little parts tear off the rocket. Sometimes the rocket makes a really loud whistling sound and kind of squiggly squiggles, but you've done all your other calculations correctly. Power to weight ratio, uh, you got a motor that's sufficient enough with enough thrust and burn time for an overall uh, specific impulse that's adequate for the rocket you're launching vertically. Uh, also, you've counted, calculated your center of pressure and your center of, uh, uh, your center of gravity. Well, the only thing is you just put kind of a funny looking nose cone on it. The nose cone you put on it was a little on the flat side and it created a, a great impedance, impedance uh, and created excess flow, uh, uh, coefficient of drag, but the rocket still fly, flew fine. Why am I saying all this? And I'll tell you exactly why. If you're off on the center of gravity of the rocket, it's going to make it impossible to find the center of gravity or center of pressure. Center of pressure, the balance of the rocket in vertical flight as it's underpowered from the rocket motor. If you're off on center of pressure, the rocket is not only is not going to fly right, it may not even get off the launch pad. It may, and it will do a lot of damage to itself. The rocket will probably destroy itself, including the motor system. If you're unlucky, it'll damage the, uh, the launch rail or, uh, or the launch rod. It can pose a danger to uh, other uh, bystanders and, and observers at a rocket meet. So you don't want that. So hopefully the range safety officer can catch that mistake before it happens. And range safety officers from NAR and Tripoli are very, very astute at that sort of thing. But they let one slip through the uh, through, through the net every once in a while um, at, at uh, Plaster Blaster one time. Um, evidently somebody did not remember or it, that they're not supposed to put the uh, the uh, the limiting cap on top of the launch rod. Well, a J-powered rocket on a launch rod of all the darndest things, they put the limiting cap on to keep the rocket from accidentally launching, which didn't work because when they went to go launch it, they forgot about that uh, the, the rod cap. And subsequently, when the rocket launched off the ground with a very, very powerful J-motor, uh, J-powered motor, which are a very, very powerful motors that dug up the dirt, took the top part of the launch rod with it, which had a cast iron base, rocket went sideways and slammed the cast iron base of that launch tower right into the uh, forward left pillar of a Ford Ranger pickup truck. And if you've ever seen an accident like that, well, you can't just straighten that pillar out. The car is history. You either get another cab, you, not the car or truck, you either get another cab for the truck or you drive it to the junkyard. That's not something that can necessarily can be repaired, although it can, but you have to, you'd have to cut out large sections of the, of the cab and frame itself, and it's more work than the car is worth, so you end, up, you end up getting a check from the insurance company and trashing the car. So I've seen all that, but that was, um, maybe that was more of a safety issue. I'm not sure why I've mentioned it, but uh, the point being, if the center of pressure, like I've always been off of the center of pressure of some of my uh, stranger looking rockets, not to do a twin engine rocket. I, I built a twin engine rocket before, similar to the one we have now, and it launched successfully after about six attempts because they had those stupid 24 millimeter, well, yeah, 24 millimeter F27 white lightning motors from Aerotech. And Aerotech does, makes great products, but they fail to realize that, and I've mentioned this before, that when you when you hit that electric uh, match, it, 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 it basically creates extra air pressure uh, in those slot burners. In those slot burners, there's not enough uh, square area in there to accommodate the, the rise in barometric pressure from the ignition uh, of the electric match. So the match ends up blowing itself out and not igniting the fuel. You'll go through six, seven, you either go multiples of two, because uh, I had two engines, or we went through six fuses in the seventh, in the seventh and eighth fuse, the fourth time, the fifth time, we went through like you know, six to eight fuses, and we got the final thing, got the thing to launch. Same layout, twin engines, two fins. I remember, <laughs> I remember Andy Warner, the director of Plaster Blaster at the time. I remember him saying, "I don't get it," you know, because he just finished getting my level, my level one certification. Yay, power to me. I might, I made a modified kit, so I, I didn't. Uh, no, 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 that wasn't it. No, no, no. 
my, my level one certification was an Aerotech uh, model that I'd gotten from Ultimate Hobbies in Tustin. So let's scratch that. But um, it just seems to, you know what, no. It just seems to me, I, I got that Aerotech kit, but I modified it by putting, putting six fins on it, and I loved it. But I remember a comment from Andy Werner saying, I don't get it. First you build a six fin rocket, now we're, in, now we're down to a rocket with two engines and two fins. Jason, you're not making any sense. Of course, I've never made any sense my entire life, but uh, memories like that stick with me. With me. You go to a rocket launch, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Anyway, so we're going to do that tomorrow. We're going to load six fins on this. It's going to take a while. I think I'm going to go ahead and fabricate those fins in the morning, and then after I'm done with that, do a heads up uh, uh, YouTube uh, uh, short on YouTube and shoot a regular video. And I'm going to show you the fins that I've, I've fabricated, and I might demonstrate how to how to fabricate one fin so you know how to. And, and of course, things will be, get more de detailed as we start repeating lessons and building more rockets. But we'll do that tomorrow. The problem is that cutting and fabricating and, and, and surf, surface um, surface condition the material and then cutting and fabricating the fins is, is a drawn out process. And I just want to kind of show some, some general information. We are going to load all six fins on this tomorrow. One thing we're going to make sure to do is this launch log cannot be interfering with any one of those six fins. So I'm going to show you how to, to, to avoid making that mistake. If you've made the mistake of, like I did, of putting a launch, launch lug, this, this little metal tube right here, a glued to the frame of airframe of your rocket, which is the long tubular part. <laughs> um, um, if you've done that before with me, you haven't, you haven't, you know, you haven't loaded your fins on, I'll show you how to, how to get around that by what I'm going to do tomorrow. However, thinking about it, even if you do build the rocket, completely just short of the paint primer and you load the fence on you think wait a minute i'm going to need to put a launch lug on it if you install the launch lug incorrectly and we'll talk about this too if you launch if if the launch lug is is it's, it's kind of if it's at an angle with the body of the rocket um that's your first mistake you're gonna have to rip that up um you're not going to really break the pcb but you are going to make an unsightly mess once you finish the rocket or, you know, you paint it over the launch lug, it's a very, eh, keep me, it's an unsightly mess. I use this thin wall PVC and I'm telling you to do the same because you can remove the primer, the paint primer from this without doing any significant damage to the wall of the uh, body tube itself. Craft paper, guess what? Once you set it, once you glue it, once you primer and painted it, that's it. You are done with the way that rocket looks. You cannot make any body repairs on it. If, they're, if the rocket is performing so badly, you can't fly anymore, guess what you get to do? Either hang it in the cabinet, call it your wall of shame, or you throw that rocket out and start over again. Guys, that's just that's just how it works. I've been through that last 23 years. It's heartbreaking, but that's how it goes. Um, so anyway, so that's that. You know, so but like I was, I was saying, if you load the, the fins, if you put the fins on the rocket first, that's fine. But if you have an exact fit launch tube or or the rocket's long enough to where it requires two launch tubes, uh, which is uh, two smaller tubes set equidistant, now you have several challenges. You have the challenge of line, lining up the, uh, the launch lugs times two. Also, you got another, an extra challenge a second challenge is lining the two launch lugs up to each other, perfectly, perfectly lined up with each other. Hey, good night. So the launch rod goes through both without binding up and without the rocket hanging cockeyed or sideways or wanting to constantly twirl and do the spin around the launch rod. You know, like, uh, well, I'm not going to say anything. Um, that's the second challenge. And the third and most important challenge is where in the heck did you put those two launch lugs? Because if they directly hit a fin, guess what? And you made your and you you made a mistake of getting a craft paper model with balsa uh, balsa uh, uh, you know, balsa fins. Guess what? You, that, that when you put those rockets together, they're so light and flimsy, you you can't repair them. So guess what you get to do? You need to, you need to get the launcher uh, the rocket sideways. Put it on a thinner, stiffer launch rod, 
or throw the darn thing away. It's been built improperly. Again, I'm sorry. I use materials that are more forgiving and can be rebuilt more than two or three or even four times. So if the rocket breaks or needs to be sanded down and repolished or repainted somewhere, you've got some material underneath the paint primer to work with. If something busts off, then you can work with it. So there's also plastic welders, which work great because they take the place of, uh, that, that just reminds me, I think, oh, that's right. You know, I, I was just thinking, because I do have an $18 credit at Harbor Freight, and I'm just reminding myself. Um, so tomorrow, I'm going to get, oh my goodness, I might be able to get both. Tomorrow, if I can remember, I have to go to Harbor Freight to spend the $18 on the gift card, <laughs> because I really want to, and I'm going to get two things. Mark my words, I'm going to get a um, uh, plastic welder, I think they have one on sale for like, eh, geez, like over thirteen dollars. But one other thing that I also want to get, and it's not a heat gun. I forgot about it. Um, oh yeah, a glue gun. Get yourself a nice glue gun as well, and we'll be using those glue sticks. I've changed my mind about RTV uh, silicone, the white stuff or the clear stuff. In these valleys, I want to put. I want to put glue. Um, but the thing is, we have to be able to grab it with our fingers and shape it. So yeah, maybe I'll hold off on the glue gun. I'm not really uh, impressed with their performance in the past. Glue guns are a pain in the butt. But if you have an ongoing need for, for gluing things with a glue gun, that's fine. So I'm going to think about it. I'm either going to get, i tell you what, I'm either going to get white RTV silicone, keep doing things that way to, to uh, seal and, and shape and then politely shape the bases, the tins, and other attachments to a main body tube. I again, I might get the glue, or um, I was just one or the other. I'm thinking of spending all eighteen dollars because I just love shopping for tools. Um, but like I said, I need to get the uh, I, I need to get the uh, I need to get a glue gun. Uh, I also would like to get a plastic welder. So we'll see how that goes tomorrow. Um, amongst the many, many things that I have to do. My goodness, is already 10 o'clock. You know what? i got to wrap it up because I've got a dinner date with a movie at around 10.20. And I tell you, time goes so fast. You're having fun. And I'm having a lot of fun. Hey, you guys are wonderful. I can't see you, but I love you anyway. Um, what's this thing in front of me? Well, I'm glad you asked. Um, look at Paxton and Valencia have a very, very busy napping schedule. I'm just concerned that they're pushing themselves too hard with a nap routine. Damn, right there, you can see two two sets of ears, a uh, mass of black fur. Um, that's the two of them together. They're, they're brother and sister, not biologically, but they, they've uh, embraced their relationship uh, to, that, to that end. This is the beginning of a launch control box. I'm trying a different style of design. Um, you'll see how it shapes up. It is gonna be a four channel launch controller. Let me explain this very, very carefully. Um, and Paxton is actually laying on some of the parts. You know, you guys, I don't understand why you do this, but here we go. Um, these are called gang boxes right here. This guy, um, this I got at Harbor Freight for $10. Um, let me get the on-off switch. This is the on-off switch. Uh, this is what's called a through box. On this side of the uh, launch controller, this is the lid. Yeah, these, these lids remove very, very easily. Um, let's see, hold on. You know what, I might end up not going to movies tonight. I don't. This is, it's getting awfully late. I, you know how I drive to the Fullerton Theater? I don't really. I, I just, I kind of don't like going out this late. I am going to uh, end up going to, um, you know what? I can continue with the video. And I can continue with building this exciting box. Maybe I can shoot a one hour video. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's funny how you get into these things, you find out how fun they are. But I just so down in terms of getting my car fixed. I had a devil of a time replacing the driver's side drive axle on my little Toyota. And then I learned I learned some things about myself and about YouTube. Again, looked it up on YouTube. 
uh, fella had came up with a good idea on how to get the uh, one of the parts off that was hanging me up uh, for about six hours. And now um, I'm hell bent uh, stout for inventing a tool to help uh, mechanics with the same problem I, uh, I encountered. This is not a car repair show. Okay, so this, um, but I just wanted to mention that too. You know, former careers, you get back into them, you find out how miserably it treated you. And the fact that I, I guys, I've been drawing pictures of, uh, of aircraft since I was probably like nine, 10 years old. You know, why haven't I been an aerospace engineer my whole life? I'm 53 and I'm just hitting my own stride. I don't look like 53, I don't act like 53. I don't care, 53 is a number. Um, okay, so if you can see this, this is an on off, this is a tamper resistant on off switch. This is from Lowe's. This switch turns on and in the on position, it allows continuity to flow through this switch. Now, what I want to do, and I want to take up, uh, uh, see, I'm not entirely sure how well this is going to work. So I believe this is a problem I had last time. This is a four channel launch controller. This is the, this is the on off switch. When this is on, this little red LED light comes on, meets your power, and it's supposed to be bringing power to this outlet switch. However, I want to use DC power. I want to be able to open this up and, and, and open up continuity and put a DC plug uh, in here connected to a black or orange lead. I think I'll probably be using orange leads and a couple of alligator clips to go to a 12 volt car battery. And this is the gate to let the power in. On is in, uh, on is in, uh, I don't really should be hanging like that. On is in that position, off is in that position. Now, now I'm gonna go ahead and put that there, like so. You can see that. Um, and then run wires into the box with power flowing into this. It's not designed to do that, but then again, uh, AC switches and, and controls are designed to work with uh, much, much uh, higher levels of voltage. Voltage is just as dangerous as amperage, but voltage, you know, um, it, it can, it, AC voltage can kill you a uh, little less than maybe even like 20 or 30 volts coursing through your system can, can, can kick you in the butt and knock you out and go, make you go unconscious. Anything about 50, 60 or 70 or even 80 or 90 volts, um, any period of time, if that's in your system, it, it basically will start cooking you from the inside out. Eventually you'll have seizures and a heart attack and you'll die. So AC voltage is very dangerous, but um, DC voltage, if I can plug DC voltage in this and reverse continuity, um, which is a theory, then um, I'm gonna have it go through, hey guys, and you're on my switches, dude. Then I'm gonna have it go through these, uh, these four bad boys, uh, these are, uh, these are AC switches. I'll take my glasses off. I don't really care if I can't be seen. On, off. Why well, I like that. And these four, uh, it, it, the whole thing is DC powered. I guess it, it's a through box type of design. Um, the through box meaning you, you hook the battery up on one end, power in on this side with the switch on. And that, 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 um, that how I say that, that arms the uh, four switches on the inside, but the switches act as the second gate allowing uh, DC voltage to flow through the wires of these one, two, one, two, three, four leads. Uh, and again, they're just DC leads and um, black will be black will be ground, white will be power. Of course with AC voltage, uh, black is live, the white is neutral. So let me just set these switches up uh, loosely, just kind of loosely. I think I'm just gonna work on this tonight. I'm, uh, I'm just too late for the movies. And I, I said to myself, Jason, don't do that. But you know what, I, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna end up just going to the movies on Sunday, down to my own place, at Triangle Square. Um, so these are all in the off positions. Um, and um, I'm thinking, okay, so here's what we've got. Uh, this is where I have to dismount the camera to show you how a rough idea of how this is gonna work is for that in the off position. I'm not entirely sure with DC power, I don't think that I'm gonna get, be able to get this little red light 
the light up. I just thought of that. <clears throat> I also thought about the fact that it would dry. Yum, yum. Yeah, water tastes good when you're thirsty. Um, okay. Um, I like to be able to hold this in place, but I don't have anything screwed down. But let's go ahead and bring the camera over here, and I'll shine it. Um, I'll shine it on the uh, setup. Um, I had to do. I had to spend about twenty minutes shopping for all these parts. But I want to show you what a four, what one of my four channel uh, launch controllers looks like. May not even end up uh, using all the traditional fasteners. Hey, this is me close up with glasses. Look at that glare. What, what's our time? We're at 40 minutes. That's eh, okay. Um, but I want you to look at this. And see, this is where I should have the stuff tied down. If I do, and uh, there we go. Now look down at this. <laughs> I say look down at this. Camera is simply not obliging my request. Where in the heck? Oh my goodness. There we go. All right, down here. Okay, here we go. Um, how does this camera work? Um, there we go. All right, there you go. All uh, right, there. Okay, so this channel number one, channel number two, channel number three, channel number four. These are leads that go to electric matches. Um, hold on. I'm gonna back it up. These are these are plug leads, two wire plug leads, black and white, that go to uh, electric matches. Or we know rocket number one, rocket number two, rocket number three, rocket number four. Now rocket channels the secondary switch to control power going to those ignition leads are right here. Rocket number one, rocket number two, rocket number three, rocket number four. And right here, this guy, this this is a this is a two in one switch. This lets power into um, into the uh, the into the box to begin with and then so once we have this in the on position like so and, we'll have to, and then we then we can have power to go into all three but these these switches aren't going to let anything out so there you go now you have power to channel one technically speaking if you're reckless with this unit um if you are reckless with this unit technically speaking you can launch four rockets at the same time that is a reckless and irresponsible thing to do. I don't recommend this as a toy, uh, especially not for children or minors. Um, you know, kids that misbehave, or people who have uh, unusual habits, are prone to violence or destructive behavior. Um, again, uh, I, I don't recommend something like this. Uh, in practical terms, this uh, this this piece of equipment. Hey guys. Uh, um, this, this piece of equipment is just not, um, it's just not something that's, um, uh, how do I say this? It's not a toy and I don't want it to be used like a toy. Um, but anyway, so that's that. So I just wanted to show you what I'm doing. I am going to do this tonight, at least get it rough set up. I may <clears throat> angle the switches, but I've got to get a piece of some or another to help me do that. So I'm gonna make a trip to, to Walmarty. Oh boy, do I look homely or what? Uh, get a stick to put underneath it. Uh, I'll do the setup that way. I've done it before and I'll do it again. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much that. Um, <laughs> I'm a worst cameraman in the world and the glare of my glasses. Oh my goodness, I just look, I tell you what, you can't paint a barn. I wish I was better looking, but Oh well, I guess I'm not built for looks. I'm no, you know, I'm no Chris Pine or Chris Hemsworth or George Clooney or uh, anyway. I wonder how women even that nah, they don't. <laughs> anyway, okay, look, look, look. Hold on, we got a classic shot of Paxton, 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 and Valencia. You can see her mouth right there, kitty lips. Come on, Valencia, start the camera. Um, they are, they are companion kitties. You know, in this day and age with, uh, COVID-19, everybody's keeping their distance. I like it. I enjoy talking to people, but you know, we're all, we're all separate. We're kind of being torn apart by, by COVID-19. I'm still trying to figure out what's going on. I'm not really afraid, but you know, 
Anyway, so that's that. So I showed you my project. Um, again, though, I, I just, um, and I'm thinking if I really want to, I might modify my studio and bring the camera closer to the work table itself. So like I said, the uh, production value of this, uh, this channel and this show, you know, 45 minutes, the production value of this show, I, I'm, you know, I'm still working on things. Um, lighting is not, it's not so much, it's not an issue. I just, um, I don't know if I was ever an actor, I would want to be in a black and white movie. I, I look better in black and white than I do in color. I just, uh, just something about me looks unhealthy and that unnatural when I'm in color. But again, I'm not an actor. I'm not a showboat. I am, you know, for lack of a better word, an electrician, mechanic, uh, and, and engineer of all those things, the, the most unappreciated trades of all time, but that's okay. So I'm going to continue building this bad boy tonight on into the evening. I'm going to guess some of the past going on in the movies. I'll do that Sunday night. I've enjoyed talking to you folks. I, uh, I want you to hit the like, hit the subscribe button. Please leave a comment. Nobody's leaving any comments yet. I don't know why, but I really, really, really want to hear from somebody eventually. And that's pretty much that. My name is Jason Walter. I've been the host of another episode of The Rocket Minute. Um, and we'll see you tomorrow. I'm going to be filming every single day at 12 noon Pacific Daylight Time in uh, Fullerton, California, United States of America, Northern Hemisphere, Planet Earth, Solar System, Milky Way Galaxy, etc., etc., etc. If you need any more directions than that, I, I don't know what to tell you. I don't even have a spaceship. Anyway, talk to you later. See you tomorrow. Bye.